I asked a tricky anatomy geeky question about the yoga pose frog pose. And the question was, what is the anatomical position of the hips in frog pose? And I think that this is a good and a tricky question because just the way the legs are arranged in frog, let me come down and just show you frog pose while I talk about it. The way the legs are arranged here makes it kind of a tricky one to see and decipher with our movement eyes. So here's frog pose. First down, my legs are wide. This is seen from the front. And here is a quick view from the side. So I've taken my legs out wide and then I come on down. Now, most of the answers that I got when I asked what's the hip anatomical position, most of the answers were external rotation uh, and or external rotation plus abduction or uh, flexion, abduction, external rotation. Nearly all of the answers had external rotation in there. And I will propose that my anatomical understanding of frog pose is actually different than the common answers that I got. So let me, let me try to explain and you could tell me what you think. I believe that the way that I, the way that I see frog pose anatomically is that the hip position is horizontal abduction and that's pretty much it. I don't actually see external rotation in that pose, even though I know that it's like really tricky and I think it, it kind of can really easily look to us like there's external rotation. So I think that with regard to rotation, the hips are in neutral. And what's really going on there is horizontal abduction. So let me explain really quickly, just a, here's a quick review of our, uh, you know, the way that the hip can move. If I'm standing in anatomical position, we can externally and internally rotate. We can also abduct, adduct, and of course we can flex and we can extend. But then there's also this movement called horizontal abduction and also horizontal adduction. And that's where you first have the hip flexed about 90 degrees. Then it goes out wide. This is horizontal abduction. This would be horizontal adduction. This is kind of like eagle pose in yoga, horizontal adduction. So I don't think frog pose is horizontal abduction and that's it. I don't actually see external rotation in there. So I think it's helpful to see this if we compare frog to a super classic hip opener we're all familiar with, and that is pigeon pose. So here is pigeon pose. And in my pigeon pose leg, I think we can all agree that this hip is in a combination of flexion, abduction, and external rotation. So here we do have external rotation. We do have it. It's here because my outer thigh has wrapped back, the inner thigh has wrapped forward, and the hip, like the head of the femur has kind of spun um, within the acetabulum in the hip socket. It's rotated externally. So in pigeon pose, yes, external rotation. But in frog pose, I think no, because check this out. I actually, for frog, I come out of external rotation. I'm back in neutral. And I'm just gonna kind of step back here. So I've got neutral hips. And then I just take my thighs out wide and I come on down. And here, this is horizontal abduction. This is, this is the thigh flexed to 90 and then taken out wide. But no external rotation and also no internal rotation, just no real rotation that I see. If uh, here's like half a frog, say, I know I'm standing. If I were going to externally rotate, it would, this would need to happen. The inner thigh would have to lift, the outer thigh would roll down. But as you can see, this is more like a pigeon leg. This is kind of like, or pigeon chair if we do that. This is external rotation, but frog is this with no rotation. So that's what I think. And here's something, one reason why I think we, why it's confusing is the feet, the feet in frog pose. So we probably know when we look at frog, do you see how here my feet are angled out to the sides? My toes point out to the sides. And I think that that kind of, like we can see that and then we can think, oh, there's external rotation because the toes point out. And see how this is tricky because if I were standing and my toes pointed out, then yeah, this would be external rotation. But that's not actually like the mechanics of the position when you're down in frog pose because we've got this knee bent 
and anchored. The knee is anchored to the floor here. So yes, the toes point out to the side, but that's not a result of this hip externally rotating. Instead, it's just tibial rotation that's taking place at the knee joint. So the knee joint has rotation available to it. It can spin, like here, the tibia can rotate externally and internally at the knee relative to the femur. And that is what happens in frog pose, in my opinion. And that's why the feet point out here, it's not the result of hip external rotation. It's just the result of some rotation at the knee, that tibial rotation. And then lastly, I compared frog to pigeon just to kind of give that visual. But another thing I like to do is sometimes just to change our relationship to gravity and compare a pose to like sitting in a chair. So let's do that quickly and then I'll wrap up. Here's our frog pose, which I'm suggesting is only horizontal abduction, no rotation. Let's flip me. So here's frog. I kind of preserve that shape in your mind and then we rotate it 90 degrees relative to gravity. And then we, we look like this basically. So here I am sitting in a chair and I've got my legs out into frog legs and like my arms in front as though they were on the floor. And this is basically frog pose sitting up in a chair. So how did I get here? Well, I would have started just sitting here and then I would take my legs out wide and then that's that. So legs out wide, horizontal abduction. If I wanted external rotation here, then I would need to do this to get external rotation, I'd need to rotate this thigh and like the shin would lift and the foot would lift. Again, this is more pigeon leg, but that's not what happens in frog. It's no rotation, it's neutral rotation and it's horizontal abduction. So anyway, that's my case. That's my argument for why I think frog is simply horizontal abduction. If we're interested in a external rotation hip, op hip opener, put all these things in quotes, uh, then I think pigeon pose or a pose in the pigeon like family is good for external rotation, but frog is more about like stretching the inner thighs, the adductor muscles. It's more about moving the legs wide and not so much about actual rotating at the hip joint. So let me know what you think. This is what I think.